In 2020, 21.22 billion contracts were traded worldwide. And you're probably wondering why not just buying the underlying asset or just shorting it instead of using options contract. Options provide different risk reward ratios and different probabilities to win. For example, if you buy a stock, there is 50% chance it will go up or down. With options, you can totally change those probabilities and risk reward ratios. First, we need to understand options contract with some examples. I'm set up and I own this home which is $300,000. On the other hand, there's Narne and she wants to buy this home. At this current stage, she doesn't have the funds. But she knows she can pay for it after 2 years. So I agreed to sell her a contract in which she has the right, not the obligation, to buy this home at $300,000 within the next 2 years. In options world, $300,000 is the strike price and 2 years is the expiration date. If you think about it, this home's price can go up and down. So it doesn't make sense to me if I give her the contract for free. So I tell her I'm going to sell this contract for $50,000. This 50k is the option premium. She is really determined to buy this home, so we agreed on this contract. So at this current stage, I got paid $50,000 and she owns the contract. In other words, I'm the option seller and she's the option buyer. Three scenarios can happen right now. With the first one, within the next two years, the home price dropped below $300,000. And the contract that Narne is holding will be worthless because she has the right to buy at $300,000. And if the price drops to $200,000, for example, why is she still going to buy at 300 k The current market price is just 200 k which is $100,000 less. So that contract will be totally worthless. In this case, the option seller, which is me, I collected $50,000 without any risk and she basically got nothing. So she basically lost the money she paid for the premium. In options world, when the price of the underlying asset drops below the strike price, we call out of the money options. The second case is when the price stays the same. In this case, she can exercise the option and buy the home for $300,000. But she basically lost the premium because she could buy at the current market rate which is $300,000. So when the strike price is equal to the price of the underlying asset, we call at the money options. So from this, you'll understand that the only scenario where the option buyer can make money is when the price of the underlying asset increases more than the strike price plus the premium she paid for. In our case, that's $300,000 plus 50k. So Narne can make money when the value of the home increases more than $350,000. And this gets us into the third scenario, which is when the price of the underlying asset increases by value a lot. Let's say after two years, the price of this home is $400,000. Narne wants to exercise this option. She comes to me and she buys this home at $300,000. In this case, she made $50,000 because her break even now is $350k. The option seller, which is me, lost $50,000 because I sold her at $300,000. And if you're wondering why it's not $100,000 because I sold at 300 k and the current market price is 400 k I should lose $100,000. Why I just lost 50 k if you remember because we get paid in the beginning the option premium which is which was $50,000. So you should reduce $50,000 from that loss. So in this case when the price of the underlying asset is more than the strike price we call in the money options. So this whole example is the exact explanation for call options. So with the call option, the option buyer wants that the price increases in value and theoretically the option seller the inverse. If you use basic knowledge, you'll know that the more the underlying asset is volatile, the more the premium will increase be because there's more risk for the option seller and the more option gets to closer to expiry, the premiums will start to lose their value because if there's less time, there's less chance for the underlying asset to make a significant move. This is the option Greeks. I have a video which I explain perfectly how the Greeks works. Now for a put option, let's take a different case. Narne has a company and I see a great potential in that business. So I come to her and say I want to buy 50% of the business. She starts to think and she agrees to sell half of her company for 1 million dollars. But I really like the business and I want the other 50% too. I go to Narne and tell her. 
Would you agree on the contract which you have the right to sell the other 50% for $1.1 million within the next two years? She starts to think about it and she thinks that's an additional $100,000 from the current market value. So she says yes. So I sell her a put contract in which she has the right to sell me the other 50% for $1.1 million in the next two years. And she paid $30,000 for this contract. And again, like a call option, there would be three scenarios. The first one is that I could not operate the business well and eventually the business went bankrupt. And the value of this company is zero. But Narine decided to exercise her option. Me, as the option seller, I'm forced to buy from her at $1.1 million because we agreed on the contract that she has the right to sell me this business at $1.1 million even though the price of the underlying asset is zero. So I have two worries now. I lost the business and I need to pay an additional $1.1 million for something that's valued zero. So now when the price of the underlying asset decreases below the strike price, that's in the money for put options. The second case is when the price of the underlying asset is equal to the current market value. It's the same thing as a call option. The premium is worthless because you can sell at the current market price, which is the same as the strike price. That's again at the money for a put option. And the third case is when the price of the underlying asset increases a lot in value. In this case, the option seller is the winner and the option buyer will lose the premium. So the contract will be worthless. So from this, you can understand that for a put option, you, you can make money when the price of the underlying asset decreases in value. And your break even is the strike price minus the premium you paid for. And of course, it's the inverse for a call option. If you're a call option buyer, you want that the price of the underlying asset increases in value so you can make money. So in options, each contract represents 100 shares. For example, this is an option chain. Here you can see the premiums. For example, if it's $5, that's 5 times 100 shares. So this premium is worth $500. Up here, you can see the expirations of these contracts. On the left side, you can see the call contracts. And on the right, you can see the put contracts. And of course, in the middle, you have all the strike price. If you really want to learn how those options contract changed in value, you should understand very well how options Greeks works. And I have a perfect video for it. So I really recommend that you watch.